Hello and welcome again to this edition of The Other 99. Some friends of mine and I got to crack open some commander decks last weekend and we're excited to get to play them. I tasked each of us with writing a review of our respective decks. We also decided to offer ideas for budget improvements to each deck. No single improvement will cost much more than an average $25, so you can jump right into commander quickly and affordably. This episode, we're going to be looking at the black, blue, green deck, Devour for Power. Let's first take a look at the generals. Every commander pre-constructed deck has three generals, two of which are new and one that is familiar. We're going to focus mainly on the new ones. The first for Devour for Power is Mimeoplasm. As I mentioned in the last episode, the new cards in these decks have amazing artwork. Is that a T-Rex for an arm? So awesome! Here's a color intensive and interesting body double. And look at the keyword, exile there. This guy doubles as graveyard hate too. Next we have Damia, Sage of Stone. Unlike Mimeoplasm, Damia isn't as big or as affordable to play. She costs 7, which in most cases makes generals very hard to play unless you time it right. But look at her ability. It's bonkers! Combo players who are playing these colors may have just found their primary general. But be careful, if you're going to build around her, you better have a way to protect her. And finally, all of the decks come with a legendary Planar Chaos Dragon in their colors, this one being Vorosh. Vorosh is interesting and can seemingly grow to be pretty big and beastly, but unlike the rest of the dragons, Vorosh doesn't change the board state when he uses his ability, so he is arguably one of the worst of the five. Now we'll take a look at the other 99. We'll first see the whole list and then look at the highlights. So there you have it. This original list is based around milling and discard in order for you to get stuff in graveyards to copy with Mimeoplasm. This however can be a little dangerous knowing that some decks use graveyard combos. <clears throat> Aiden Oaken Shield. Anyway, Skullbriar the Walking Grave seems a little bit underwhelming in the main 99, but as a general he seems pretty good. Like many Thraxamunder players know, having haste and the ability to get larger can be very powerful. Riddle Keeper is a bit tricky. Giving your opponents a way to mill themselves can be bad for you sometimes, but there are occasional mill-centric decks that could take advantage of him. Sewer Nemesis gives us the chance to mill ourselves and seems like it'd be great in dredge-based strategies like Carador, who we will discuss later. He also has potential to get big, but only time and testing will tell how good he really is. Side Spectre is pretty sweet. He's a Spectre, which is kind of what I like to call an endangered creature type. He pulls double duty by messing with people's hand and their life totals, which is always awesome. The Vow enchantments are all pretty interesting, and serve as decent removal on a budget. The clause of not being able to attack you or a Planeswalker you control is pretty sweet. Tribute to the Wild isn't bad since it deals with indestructible artifacts as well as shrouded enchantments. But where one artifact or enchantment is, others are probably there also. Spell Crumple is awesome. Look. He's crushing a friggin' dragon! It looks a lot like another counterspell we know in Love and Commander, Hinder. Like I said before, having practically multiple copies of a card is good in Commander, and hard counters are always welcome. Minds Glow is a Join Forces card and is really open to interpretation. Some people love it for the ability to be group huggy and political. Others hate it because they like to be mean to others. Shared Trauma is also a Joint Forces card, but whether it is good or bad can be seen a little bit more clearly. If your playgroup likes stuff in the graveyards, then you probably shouldn't play it. But if you're the only one in the playgroup that uses the graveyard like a second hand, then I'd tell you to go for it. Siphon Flesh is a card we looked at in last week's episode, and I hold true now as I did back then. Utility at a great cost. Possibly a new Black Commander regular. And as every deck comes with a command tower, I'm only going to highlight this card this one time. Let me say this, there is no way R&D could have designed a five color land in anything other than EDH because of the impact it would have had on the other formats. 
as much as having a five mana land that is playable in other formats would have sold the product, I don't think Wizards wanted people cracking open boxes just for singles. Each deck comes with an assortment of singles that are EDH staples and cards that should almost always be played in your deck if you're playing the colors for them. Eternal Witness, Yavimaya Elder, Lightning Greaves, Oblivion Stone, Wonder, The Signets, Soul Ring, Brawn, Windfall, Solemn Samalacrum, and Vulturous Zombie. Overall, this list of reprints is really good. I'm glad that they included balanced, smaller utility that worked well with the larger stuff. It shows that as much as EDH is about big, bomby spells, it's also very much about utility. Now onto the revisions for Devour for Power. We decided that we would focus on a deck that used Damia as the general. Even though you could have made one for Mimeoplasm, you would need some pretty expensive creatures to make the deck worthwhile. With Damia, you can afford to spend less money on the more expensive dudes and keep cheaper yet bomby creatures. This also allowed us to include more affordable utility, making for a pretty balanced and fun deck. First, onto the cuts. Living Death is going to be cut because for this to be good, you have to build around it, and it also gives graveyard hate and sack outlets to your opponents. Minds of Glow is being cut since Mindspring is quite better. Shared Trauma will go for now since it's similar to Living Death. Sewer Nemesis is cool, but not with Damia. Lord Goyf is just a mindless fatty with no evasion. Not really worth the time. Dreamborn Muse is also not as good with Damia. Dark Hatchling is a little bit too expensive for spot removal. Extractor Demon is a little bit too narrow for Damia. Tricycle Voss is a little bit too expensive and not the bomb we're looking for. Slipstream Eel can be a dead card way too often. Patron of the Nazumi doesn't do enough for its hefty mana cost. Memory Erosion should be used for decks committed to mill. Desecrator Hag, like a few other cards, is too expensive and narrow. Brawn is good, but Trample will become unnecessary for the amount of removal and utility we are about to put in the deck. Riddle Keeper is good if you want to mill, but we don't. And finally, we will cut two swamps, a forest, and an island, leaving us with 38 lands, which even with an expensive general like Damia, we can make it happen with Ramp. Here are the suggested revisions for the deck. All card prices listed here are averages from magic.tcgplayer.com. Putrefy, just because it's good removal. Arcanus the Omnipotent can act as backup if Damia starts getting a little bit too expensive to cast. Lies Finale is one of the few sweepers that can be bought on a budget. Borderland Ranger is good color fixing. Shriek Maw is a more versatile and less mana intensive Dark Hatchling. Trigon Predator kills Survival of the Fittest and Soul Ring and some such. Honden of Seeing Winds is a budget-centric Phyrexian Arena, and it doesn't ping you every turn. Steel Hellkite is a dude to turn sideways and win games. Death Denied is great recursion for all of your utility dudes. Diabolic Tutor, because it's 10 bucks cheaper than Demonic Tutor. Bajugabog is a fantastic graveyard hate. Enough said. Ashes to Ashes is 2 for 1 removal that exiles, and the 5 life lost is manageable. Fabricate gets us Signets, or Equipment, or Steel Hellkite. Whisper Silk Cloak and Neurox Stealth Suit protect Damia for us. Mindspring is here to replace Minds Aglow. Elixir of Immortality allows you to recycle your graveyard and can be targeted by Fabricate if necessary. Loaming Shaman recycles and hates on graveyards. And Court of Calling is creature tutoring on a budget. These revisions to the deck fall right under $16 allowing for a great and effective commander deck for just under 50 bucks. Of course, these are just suggestions for one particular direction of the deck. Let me know in the comment section how you liked Devour for Power and what you would do or did do to improve upon it. Until next time, I'm Carson Perry. Thanks for watching.